Now, investigative agencies have so far been able to map a hundred odd cases related to the ISIS, but the numbers can be inaccurate or misleading. More than seven million Indians reside in West Asia. There's no saying how many of them may have traveled to Iraq or Syria. How many may be radicalized or in some way associated with these terror groups? Our next report looks at why India is an anomaly in the Islamic State's global plan. Global Jihad is resurgent. There was a time when it was being driven by geography. Today it has moved online and is being waged by lone wolves. Attacks throughout the US, Europe and other regions testify to this trend. And now the ISIS is swiftly moving closer to India's neighborhood. India has much to worry about. As the Islamic State is pushed back in West Asia, it has regrouped with the help of local terror outfits in South Asia. The first deadly example of this was the attacks in Sri Lanka, which killed over 250 people. India is often highlighted as an anomaly as far as the influence of the ISIS is concerned. As a country with the world's third largest Muslim population, the number of ISIS cases or arrests of suspects has been minimal. Liberal estimates hover around 200 to 300. Even with the higher estimates, the numbers are lower than most European countries. But that seems to be changing. So much so that the ISIS has announced a fictitious ISIS province in India called the Vilayat Al Hind. It all started with the sporadic waving of flags in Jammu and Kashmir. On May 10th, the ISIS claimed one of its terrorists was killed in an encounter in Shopian in JNK. Then there have been arrests in Kerala and Tamil Nadu of suspects engaging in ISIS literature online. To now specific intel of ISIS affiliates trying to set up base in Lakshadweep and the Minikoi Islands, putting the coastal police in Kerala on high alert. Reports say that ISIS affiliates have set off on a boat with as many as 15 terrorists on it towards the Kerala coast. So what has changed? So far, the ISIS and Al-Qaeda did not find India a critical component in its war against the global order led by the West. The West was the primary adversary since the rise of the Al-Qaeda in the 1990s. And the ISIS targeted failed Muslim states like Syria, Iraq, Libya and Somalia to create a caliphate. India has a strong security establishment and a vibrant democracy. With the rise in India's stature and the loss of ISIS in its old bastions, the Islamic State is looking eastwards. The situation in Kashmir is even more critical. There is growing disillusionment towards indigenous secessionist movements. The ISIS is looking to break new ground. The ISIS, which is at odds with groups like the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda, can find appeal in India and its Diobandi ideology. While it is imperative to remember that ISIS works strongly on a psychological level and is expected to intensify this approach to radicalize potential recruits online, it is bound to gain territorial ground as well. Does India provide fertile ground for territorial gains? The security establishment certainly hopes it does not.